What's up, everybody? It's your boy P. Loud Pack Boxing. Um, just wanted to hop in and do a video on, on this documentary I just watched, the um, Hector Camacho story. It was a really good documentary, man. And um, I remember Hector as a kid and remember some of his antics and tactics. I was too young to really understand what he was doing. didn't realize he was such a showman and didn't realize um, he was that good of a fighter. I just remember his little curly cue and his crazy outfits from back in the day. But um, the documentary was really insightful on um, just how good of a fighter Hector Camacho was, how um, he impacted his community, how beloved he was, and also um, the demons he was fighting. A lot of boxers uh, face all kinds of demons, I mean, whether it's from their upbringing, you know, or once they get a taste of success and become indulged in the lifestyle, the drugs, the women, all of those different things. But it's a lot of tragic stories in the boxing world. And uh, Hector Camacho was another one of those stories. Um, you know, he came up from Spanish Harlem, Project Super Humble Beginnings, you know, a kid on the wrong side of the track to... Um, falling in love with the sport of boxing and it changing the trajectory of his life, you know, for the most part. Um, it showed the relationship with his mom, um, how much he loved her, how much she loved him, and how... Um, his boxing career and some of the choices he made really affected her and his, his, his family, you know, his sisters and his mom. Um, it showed his path to the top. Um, you know what I'm saying? From winning his first world title to being in his first fight and, getting hurt and that changing something something in his style. He went from an entertaining fighter to when he fought and got hurt in the fight to becoming a more cautious fighter. Um, almost like overnight, it changed his fighting style. Um, he realized once he had been hurt that he could be hurt. And I guess sometimes until that happens, you might feel like it can't happen, but I forget exactly which fight it was, but when he got buzzed in the fight, it changed his whole outlook on the sport and you know of course with winning championships and money you know comes the problems you know and that's what kind of happened I believe he got started on drugs when he did a, store, a short stint in prison on Rikers Island I think I think that's where you know, was his introduction to drugs, but once he came home, the drugs were an issue, and kind of, he fought that demon throughout his whole career, you know, battling drugs, battling that street lifestyle, I mean, he was beloved in the streets, he was a flashy Puerto Rican guy, jewelry, you know, it was just, you know, the typical street stuff. Um, but he went on to win, you know, world titles and become a respected um, boxer in the fight game. You know what I'm saying? Giving the Puerto Rican people something to be proud of during that time. Um, now, like many other boxers who battle demons and kind of came from that street element it kind of becomes full circle you know you start at the bottom you get away from it then you end up back in that environment and that's kind of what happened to 
Hector Camacho, you know, he wound up moving to Puerto Rico and um, got affiliated with some unsavory characters over in Puerto Rico, according to his family, and um, would wind up being killed, you know, shot in a car. He was 50 years old. Um, just another tragic end to another respected boxer. Um, there's been a lot of mystery surrounding his death. His family doesn't believe the way the police and reports are saying that it went down. Um, and they were still didn't have closure with the situation at this point, but but overall, it was just a great documentary, just documenting his life, showing how beloved he was amongst his people, showing how much of a showman he was. I mean, I don't think this guy wore the same ring outfit twice. I mean, he was one of the early guys with the um, different outfits and crazy costumes and really was big into that. He designed his own stuff. He was really big into his look. Um, but like I say, man, it was just interesting to see, you know, how big of a star he was. I, like I said, I was a kid. I remember seeing him and just doing all this crazy stuff. Um, but being a man and going back and seeing the legacy he left behind, um, definitely got respect for Hector Camacho. And um, I just thought it was, it was a good documentary. I like all boxing documentaries, but... Um, this was definitely a good one, insightful for me, putting me up on my, my Hector Camacho, Macho game, this Macho time, but, um, that's all I really got, man, if y'all get a chance to check out that documentary, um, it's worth watching, um, y'all hop in the comments, let me know if y'all seen it or not, let me know, are y'all familiar with Hector Macho Camacho, you know, this was... 80s early 90s man and um hit the notification bell subscribe like the video and uh one other thing man like the, the one of the one of one of the saddest parts of the documentary man was watching um hector camacho destroy sugar ray man sugar ray was 40 he was way past his prime i mean hector camacho was past his prime but um man to see him just take it to Sugar Ray like that was was a hard pill to swallow, so um, he definitely got some names on his resume, but Sugar is probably one of his biggest and saddest wins because it was just tough watching Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard, we remember just looking like a shell of himself and watching Hector dismantle him was pretty rough, but like I said, that's all I really got. It's your boy P. Y'all have a good day. I'm out.